Yes, it is possible to use a potty pad when you're getting ready to go back to work full time. Before you consider that though, I wanna share the 10 most important things that we did to help train our puppy when we were getting ready to go back to work. Oh, and before I forget, everything mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below, including my favorite puppy products like this crate and toys. The first tip is routine. Making sure that I'm including mental stimulation or brain games or enrichment at least four to six times a day. Mental stimulation is twice as tiring than physical exercise alone, and puppies are growing at the fastest rate during puppyhood, and that means that their joints can be loosey-goosey, so excessive physical exercise can actually be harmful. One of the ways that I make sure I give my puppy mental stimulation is giving them appropriate chews, toys. For example, dental chews or durable toys that have dental grooves like this one. This is from his recent Super Chewer box. I'll talk about that in a second. I've taken one of his favorite peanut butter spread treats. It is a pet friendly peanut butter that has no xylitol, no sugar added, and no unhealthy oils, which is very hard to find nowadays. This is only peanuts, apples, it has spirulina, parsley, which is a natural fresh breath freshener, and some healthy coconut oil. You sit, and I spread it on here the night before. Yes, he's very excited. And then I freeze it, so then he works on it. Can you go crate? Yes, good boy, there you go. And so now as he chews on it, it massages his gums. If you're not familiar, BarkBox and Super Chewer are monthly subscription toy boxes custom to your dog based on their chew needs, their size. And this month's theme is Vegas. And the one that Wally is using right now is their grab it trick. So this is what it looks like. This is from the super chewer box, which means it's made for more super chewers, really durable toys. We made with natural rubber, really high quality. And what happens is when they're able to pull this piece off, you see there's an extra toy in there. So it's like a two in one, this cute little martini toy. And then our second favorite, this is probably his favorite is the Texas Tugum. This is a great tug toy. Tug of war is actually a highly enriching and mentally stimulating activity. And then for the Bark Box toys this month, actually Wally was playing with this one. The Bark Box are the more traditional plush toys, which are fun for puppies because they love to roll on them and throw them. And again, you can get them for smaller sizes uh, as well. It's all custom to your dog. But look at this. It has nice crinkling. It has squeakers and it's different um, aspects that it moves. And I love these toys because what I love to do is every month when they come, especially with puppies, is I take their food if they're eating a kibble or their treats and I layer it at the bottom of the box and then I take their toys and I put it on top of the food or treats and then they have to dig forage and sniff them out, which is an incredible enrichment activity because using their nose tires their minds, which is why I'm so thankful that BarkBox and Super Chewer is supporting our mission and sponsoring this part of the video because I love elevating the fact that they are really encouraging enrichment play, mental stimulation play, healthy chewing to help with dental health, things like that is really awesome. Again, this is all linked below with a special link. Let's talk about how long we can leave our puppies alone. The best case scenario is when you first bring home a new dog or a new puppy is that you're able to stay home with them or somebody within your family at least the first three to seven days consecutively. If you're able to do that, I understand that's not always possible. You're going to be setting your puppy up for more success when it comes to crate training, potty training, because structure and routine and consistency is the number one tip with helping with crate training and potty training. That said, that's not always a reality for everyone. So the next best option, in my opinion, in my experience, is to hire help if you can, or at least come home during lunch breaks, or try to scatter your schedule with your partner, your roommate, your spouse, whatever it may be, um, and making sure that you are not exceeding the amount of time that your puppy can safely and comfortably hold their bladder, which as we all know, typically correlates with their age. So example, a puppy that's two months old, usually and generally speaking, can hold their bladder for about two hours or so, 
safely and comfortably. Now, what do you do if you can't let your puppy out every two to three hours? A caveat, this is just what worked for me and my puppies or rescue puppies that I fostered. You got to do what's best for you and your family. So first and foremost, I always use a nanny cam. Whether you're leaving your puppy alone for 10 minutes or three hours, a nanny cam like this, this is the pet cube. Um, there's several out there. Uh, this allows me to keep an eye on the puppy. So if something's happening, I can address it right away. One of my favorite crates is obviously the Diggs crate. There is a special link for this below. I am a huge fan of this crate for the exact reason you see here. It has a garage style opening. So what you could do is you could leave this crate potentially in a puppy proofed shut room. So an example, what we would do is take a crate like this, leave the door open so the puppy could come in and out, but still get used to this being their den. And then we would put the crate in a room like a laundry room or a bathroom that was completely puppy proof. So then what that would do is the puppy could come out of the crate to potty where you could use something like a potty pad. And I will talk more about potty pad training tips at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that or a fresh patch green grass pad, which is a real grass pad that you can get in different sizes. And what that does is that mimics the outdoors, but inside the room. So you'd have a little puppy palace set up in your guest bathroom, for example, where you'd have a crate where the puppy could go in and out. And then to encourage them not to potty in the crate, you could put something like a potty pad or uh, a fresh patch grass pad on the other side of the room so that they're encouraged to go potty there. And what this does is that helps them to have a separate space to sleep and play from where they're going to potty. This is something that worked really well for me when I had to leave puppies alone longer than I wanted or, to. Let's say my space was limited and I didn't have a puppy proofed room to leave the crate in with the door open. What I would do in that scenario is consider using a play pen and have the crate in the playpen I would leave it open this is all in the beginning before they're fully crate trained so that I'm not just locking them in the crate and having them scream for four hours because we haven't fully got to crate train yet and I leave the crate open like this both doors and have it set down in a playpen and what this would do again is create a safe space for my puppy I would still always use a nanny cam like the pet cube because I want to be able to check on the puppy and make sure they're safe or a third option is you can just leave your puppy in a crate and have it all shut and they just stay in the crate while you're gone. Just understand that it could delay crate training and potty training because you're kind of rushing the process if you're not able to stay home with them in the beginning. Because when it comes to crate training, the number one tip I have found to be incredibly helpful and how we crate trained Wally when he was a puppy before he was like nine and a half, nine weeks old was to make the crate Disneyland. And I'll tell you how I did that at the end of this video. Now I know you're gonna ask, what can I leave with my puppy unsupervised when I go to work to keep them entertained? Here's my honest, true answer. The reality is nothing. Anytime you leave something alone, unsupervised with your dog or puppy, there is a potential risk, sometimes bigger than others, that they could tear a piece off and try to swallow it and have a choking hazard or destroy it or get wrapped up into it. So I'm really not a fan of leaving to toys and shoes in there, which is why during that structured re routine we talked about earlier, I make sure that they get a lot of mental stimulation uh, before work, hopefully at least during a lunch break and then after work because remember puppies can sleep anywhere up to 15 to around 18 hours a day. So as long as the time that you are with them, you're working with them, you're working their mind, giving them a little bit of exercise as well, they're much more likely to just sleep while you're gone. If you're leaving and your puppy is all amped up in energy, I say this with love, but you're doing it wrong. And it doesn't mean you're a bad pet parent. It just means we need to prioritize or at least consider prioritizing some kind of interactive play with you and working their mind when you are around them so that by the time you leave the house or apartment, they're zonked out. Oh, and a quick caveat on this size of crate. As you can see, it's obviously too small for Wally now. He grew out of it. He grew a lot bigger than we expected, but as you can see, he still loves being in it. I just brought it in here to show you. This is what he used for the first year of his life. I probably, for his size, uh, for a Diggs crate, I would have gone with the large had we known he'd be 
this big. He's 42-ish pounds, probably gonna get a tiny bit bigger. But you can see how long this toy has taken him to get through and there's still some of that uh, peanut butter left in here. And look at this, it looks so, it's so funny. It's like a green color from Spirulina, which I love giving dogs because it is an anti-inflammatory, super nutrient dense supplement. So it's giving him some healthy benefits, but also working his jaw, which is a mentally stimulating activity. Now, I want you to leave any questions you have below about leaving your dog. You can see more videos linked below on how we got Wally trained to stay out of his crate safely. And now full time, he can roam the house with no issues. Or if you wanna see what the safe lengths of time are to leave your puppies alone, those are linked below. Uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button. And if you want to know more about crate training and how we did it in like under a week, click the video right here. Or if you want to learn more about potty training your puppy fast, click the video right here. And thank you for being here. I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.